Okay class, magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Tayo ay nagbabalik sa atong lesson na pinamagatang Construction Engineering and Management. So, naanta sa part 2 which is Construction Project Management. Okay. So, sa lahat ng ating mga tagapanood at tagapakinig, isang napagandang magandang magandang buhay sa inyong lahat. Now, I'm press ninyo ang like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Kara sub subscription to my channel will guarantee you a grade of 3.0. Char lang. <laughs> okay, let's go back to our lesson, ladies and gentlemen. So, for introduction, so one of the largest industry in the world is the construction industry. So, growth in this industry, in fact, is an indicator of the economic conditions of a country. Yes. Yes. Kasi kung ang isang country ay maraming pera, maraming ongoing na construction dyan. Sabihin, pag maraming pera, maganda economic conditions na isang bansa. Diba? Okay, construction industry consumes a wide employment circle of labor. It is more challenging than other industries due to its unique nature. Every project is a one of a kind and many conflicting uh, parties are involved. Projects are constrained by time, money, and quality. And of course, uh, the risk. Okay? So what is a construction project? A project is made of a group of interrelated work activities constrained by specific scope, budget, and schedule to deliver capital assets needed to achieve the strategic goals of an agency or an institution. Okay, so when we say project, it's composed of many ano, uh, work activities. So, uh, maraming uh, activities that involves to complete a certain project. Okay, The goal of construction project is to build something. What differentiates the construction industry from other industries is that its projects are large, built on site, and generally unique. Time, money, labor, equipment, and materials are kinds of resources that are consumed by the project so projects begin with a stated goal established by the owner and accomplished by the project team so as the team begins to design estimate and plan out the project the members learn more about the project that was known when the goal was uh, first established so this often leads to a redefinition of the stated project uh, goals and sabi dito you can possibly reach your project's goal if you don't know what it is. So, paano mo may hit yung target mo? Hindi mo alam kung ano yung uh, gusto mong mangyari or what is your goal. So, napakahirap no, kung uh, trabaho ka ng trabaho tapos hindi mo alam kung ano, kung paano ka matatapos, kung ano yung uh, gusto mong tapusin, di ba? So, dapat it all started with a goal. So, you should understand how your project fits in, in with the broader uh, company direction. Pero teka, uh, I know kung ano ang aking goal. Kasi, uh, depende siya sa sinabi sa akin ng boss ko. Pero however, a set of deliverables isn't necessarily a goal. So, porque yun yung inutos ng boss mo, yun na yung goal mo. Hindi ganun. Okay? So, let's say your project uh, involves training of new employees in a new software system. Okay? So, what, how would you define uh, the goal? What is your goal in conducting training uh, for new employees? So, your goal could be, uh, one, to make employees more productive in their jobs or uh, enable employees to better serve customers or create a prototype program with uh, reduced training costs that can be used to reduce overall training costs across the company. Or lastly, increase employee retention by providing useful on the job skills so these goals suggest different priorities as well as different measurements for gauging the degree to which your project has succeeded in meeting its goal so nakuha nyo ba ang uh, sabi ng goal kunyari sabi ng boss mo so gawin yung example kunwari itong ano case ni Karil J Banawa sorry uh, Karil J Sanawe Bandigan okay special mention Plus point, siyempre, kaya na special mention. Example, uh, 
giingon sa iyang parents Karil uh, Jay pangita nag uyab kay matiguwang naka panguyobi na si letter J sorry patay ka karon so unsa imong goal porke mao tong giingon sa imong ginikanan mao na to imong goal so syempre dili ni siya mao ang tamang goal ang goal na panguyaban si letter J so pwede ni mahimong goal diha is one is to have an in inspiration <laughs> sa iyong studies and another goal is para may makasama ka sa pagtanda mo <laughs> may mag-alaga sa iyo pag magkasakit ka so iyon yung goal yung tarang tipong may mga ano uh, benefits o tipong kailangan ko siyang jowain para pumasa ako sa engineering kanon so yung kung sinabi sa ng nanay mo na mag jowa ka na kasi tumatanda ka na hindi yun ang goal okay so klaro okay So how how exactly uh, do you go about uh, determining your goal? Of course, uh, go back to the person who asked you to take on the project and grill him on her or him about what's expected uh, for this project. So the answer uh, you get might be the that the project should do all of these things, uh, but think about whether that's realistic and whether one of these goals should be paramount in guiding you and your uh, project team. So when you understand your goal, you can begin to define uh, the specific parameters of the project. So this is often referred to as a project's scope. So it is necessary to know that a scope is not a goal. So let's go back to the example of training projects. So ano yung uh, maging scope niya, yung training uh, your employees. In that case, the scope of your uh, project involves managing the entire creation, delivery, and maintenance of the training program. Or is your goal uh, to simply create the training materials or should you focus your focus be limited to launching the new, new training including promoting it to management and staff so these goals indicate very different projects so each with its own set of deliverables tasks resources schedule and cost so sa case ni uh, Karil J Sanawe Bandigan so making a scope niyan is dapat within four months gisugot na ko ni Kuan ni letter J so, ana, scope or dapat bago mo graduate kami na uyab na mi ana ana ang scope okay sorry uh, Karel J nagamit ka example so all projects must have a definite beginning and end of course dapat dapat kung may sinimulan dapat may hangganan so it needs to determine the time it will take to complete the project by developing the project schedule so gagawa ka ngayon ng maraming schedule scheduling involves breaking down the work into manageable activities needed to accomplish the scope of each uh, deliverable so estimating the duration of each activity and pacing them in logic logical uh, sequence okay so this is an example of a uh, construction schedule okay if you can see uh, merong date Kung may contract title, yan. Work schedule bar chart. So, itawag siyang work schedule uh, gun chart or bar chart. Okay, meron yung mga description of works. Earth work, concrete works, masonry works, mga ganyang works. Okay, then nakabot lang din dyan ang mga duration. Kung ilang weeks siya dapat matapos. Then for December, kung anong gagawin, kung kailan siya gagawin. Kunyari, ito December, 4th week dapat. Simulan siya ng 4th week ng December, tatapusin din siya ng ano, yung last week ng December. So, example, for the masonry works, dapat mag-start siya ng 1st week ng January, then matapos ng 3rd week ng January. Pero actual, ito yung mga red, ito yung mga actual nangyari. So, nangyari, actual, nag-start siya ng 1st week ng February at matapos ng 4th week ng January. Okay? So, hindi ko to discuss sa inyo yung detail kung paano siya ginagawa. I'm sure uh, this is the stuff during sa construction project management na subject ninyo. So I'll just give you a hint or idea on what is the work schedule sa isang uh, construction. Okay. So every project needs a budget to initially define its funding requirements. So the project manager develops the budget based on the cost estimates at the beginning of each uh, project phase. So yung work schedule na pinakita ko kanina, Ito mga computation ng percent relative weight, percent progress to date, nakabase yan sa cost estimate or sa mga cost. Okay. 
sa cost ng uh, total project or per uh, work activities. Okay. So, na proceed to breaking project into pieces. So, usually kung malaki yung project yan, uh, ag bring break natin siya into uh, pieces para mas madali siyang i-manage. Usually, para sa mga government project, usually may phase 1, phase 2, phase 3. Ganun. Para yung budget din nun, kada phase, uh, hindi, hindi ganun kagulo. So, how does all this goal and scope uh, analysis relate to the project? So, knowing your goal and scope helps you to identify the steps you should be performing to accomplish them. Of course. So, before you create your first task, you should probably begin to think beyond the scope of your project to more detailed project uh, parameters. So, what are those parameters to consider? Unang -una, number one is deliverables. So, yung mga deliverables are tangible products, services, or results that you'll produce during your project. Kung may tinanim, may aanihin, ganun. So, deliverables is your output. Okay? Tangible products, yung pwedeng mahawakan, nakikita, na dagama, na aamoy, ganun. So, example ulit yung kay Karil J. So, ano yung tangible products niya? If nakuha niya yung kanyang goal, equals to, okay, kung ano man ang inisip niyo, yun na yun. Okay, what is another parameters? The key dates. So, in addition to the project end date, do you have to meet another key dates along the way? So, yung mga importante yung ano lang ha, importante yung uh, dates o petsa. Okay, then we have the completion criteria. So, knowing your completion criteria gives your team something specific to aim for and helps you create the blast space of your project. Siyempre, mahirap naman kung di nyo alam kung kailan dapat matapos yung project, no? Kasi, lalo kayong malulugi kung wala kayong uh, completion criteria. Di pwede yung mga uh, trabahante nyo, trabaho ng trabaho, tapos, back class, back job, tas trabaho na naman ulit, parang di matapos-tapos na trabaho. Mahirap yun. So, dapat meron kayong laging uh, completion date or completion criteria. Okay? And another parameters is the expectations. Okay? So, knowing what you expect from your team, management, and yourself can help you identify uh, some tasks. So, if you expect your team to hold a quarterly debriefing meeting and submit a progress report, so you might include such tasks in your project. So, if you expect management to sign off on a prototype, so a task such as prototype approval is uh, logical. Okay? So, kung ano yung mga expectation nyo, dapat uh, naka-include din doon. Uh, leads for you to consider. Okay? Then we have the potential risk. So identifying potential problems areas can help you build in some checks and balance to help avoid or minimize them. Okay, yung mga safety, yung mga possible na problema ang pwede nyo makaharap. For example, during your project, biglang umulan or pangit yung panahon or nagkaroon ng bagyo. So ano yung gagawin nyo? So ano yung papagawa nyo sa mga trabahante ninyo? Okay, pang magbaha. So dapat nyo yun, ah, naka, ano pa rin doon, incorporate. Uh, sa inyong mga uh, project. So, dapat pagka ganun, alam nyo na yung uh, ano yung mga dapat nyo gawin. Okay? Or, for example, nagkaroon ng sunog or kunyari, inyong mga uh, empleyado or trabahador is nagkaroon ng COVID positive. So, anong gagawin nyo? Stop operation ba? Stop your work? So, ayun. Yun yung mga dapat nyo i-consider. Okay? Mga risks, mga accidents na pwede maka-apekto or makasama uh, sa inyong uh, for the duration of their project. Okay. Kuha. Next is we have the project life cycle. So, ano ba ang project life cycle? So, after the scope of the project is clearly defined, uh, detailed engineering design will provide the blueprint uh, for construction. So, and a definitive uh, cost estimate will serve as the baseline uh, for cost control. So, in the procurement and construction stage, the delivery of materials and the erection of the project on site must be carefully plan and control. So, after the construction is completed, there is usually a brief uh, period of start-up of the constructed facility when it is first occupied. So, finally, the management of the facility is turned over to the owner for full occupancy until the facility leaves out its useful life and it's designated for demolition or con conversion. So, by examining the project life cycle from an owner's perspective, you can focus on the proper roles of 
various activities and participants in all stages regardless of the contractual arrangements for different types of work. So when we are conducting a uh, managing the project, so yung sarili natin, ilalagay natin as uh, owner. Kumbaga parang ikaw yung uh, nagamayari nung itata yung uh, building or facilities na yun. Ganun yung construction project management. So ikaw yung kinatawan ng owner, tayo na mga engineer. May yung kinatawan ng owner sa project site. Ganun yung ibig sabihin na yun. So the project life cycle may be viewed as a process through which a project is implemented from beginning to end. So this process is often very complex. However, it can be decomposed into several stages as indicated by the general outline in figure 1. So this is an example of a um, process of a uh, project life cycle. Okay, first we have the market demands or perceived needs, then going to conceptual planning and feasibility study, then we have the design engineering, procurement and construction, startup, occupancy, operation, maintenance, and disposal of facilities. So, ganun yung life cycle ng isang project. So, it's a process in which a project is implemented from beginning to end. Okay, so meron siyang start, meron din siyang end. Since operation and maintenance of a facility will go on long after the completion and acceptance of a project, so it is usually treated as a separate problem except in the consideration of the life cycle cost of a facility. So all stages from conceptual planning and facility studies to the acceptance of a facility for occupancy may be broadly lumped together and referred to as design or construct process. So while the procurement and construction alone are traditionally regarded as the province of the construction industry. Okay. So all organizational approaches have advantages and disadvantages depending on the knowledge of the owner in construction management as well as the type, size, and location of the project. So in making choices, owners should be concerned with the life cycle cost of constructed facilities rather than simply the initial construction uh, cost. So, saving small amounts of money during construction may not be worthwhile if the result is much larger operating cost or not meeting the uh, functional requirements for the new facility satisfactory. So, useless yung pagkitipid daw. Kung in the end, uh, mas mamparami ka ng gastos sa mga repair, sa maintenance, ganun. So, the owner must be very concerned with the quality of the finished product as well as the cost of construction itself. So, therefore, the facilities operating management should also be considered as early as possible. So, just as the construction process should be kept in mind at the early stages of planning and uh, programming. So, construction project phases. So, we have the pre-construction phase. So, ano na ba yung mga ginagawa bago magsimula ang isang construction? So, ito yung tinatawag na pre-construction phase. So, the pre-construction phase of project can be broken into conceptual planning, schematic design, design development, and contract documents, and the bidding and award phase. Okay. So, sa design, yun yung pinaka-first stage of contract construction, syempre. Where in the designer, it's either architect or engineer, assess the feasibility of the design uh, based on the regulations and codes of the building. So, depending kung anong klaseng building yung itatayo o yung kung anong klaseng project. So, uh, different types of building or occupancy, may kanyang-kanyang uh, codes yan. So, hindi yan sila basta-basta parehas. So, the size of the building and the amount of space needed by the owner, of course, should be take into consideration, consideration during the design phase. So, after which, prepare na yung mga schematic designs, research type of equipment, pati mga materialis needed, and of course, the cost. So, napakalaking uh, part lagi yung cost. And for the final preparation of the documents, so such as drawings or yung mga blueprints, nandun na rin kasama yung mga specifications general conditions, and bill of quantities. So, I have here some example of uh, technical specifications na nakasama, include sa mga plano. So, dapat nakalagay dyan, schedule of finishes, kung anong klase ng floor finishes, ground floor, paint cement finish ba siya, or may tiles, mga toilet and bath, may mga tiles, ganun, second floor, kung anong klase ng finish siya, wall finishes, ceiling finishes, ganyan. Sa so, kitchen finishes, kung anong klase ng... Uh, 
gamitin para sa cabinet. Ah, ganun. Then, sa material specification, then, yung thermal control doors, kung anong klaseng door, panel bus siya, or plus type door. Windows, ganun din, casement or sliding, mga ganun. Ganun, kung anong matang materialis. Yun ang tinatawag na uh, technical specifications. Okay, pati sa painting. So, yan ang example ng uh, technical specification. Okay. Then, this is an example of a plan. Nakalagay dyan yung perspective, location plan, vicinity map, site development plan ng housing units. Okay. Nakalagay dyan yung mga second floor plan, roof plan, uh, ground floor plan, ganyan. So, gagawa kayo nyan sa drawing and autocad na subject ninyo. So, yan yung example. Nakalagay dyan yung mga doors and windows schedule, kung ano yung size and height ng yung mga pinto, bintana, gano'n. Kasama yan dyan. And of course, for structural side, sa uh, side natin or sa part natin na CV, dyan kasama yung foundation plan, floor framing plan, roof framing plan, and the schedule ng mga beams, and mga beams, and schedule of uh, column. Okay. Roof framing. So, when you go to your higher years, matutunan nyo yan kung paano uh, gagawin, paano gumawa ng plano. Okay. Iyon yung mga final uh, documents needed sa isang project. Under ng pre-construction phase, nandiyan din yung bidding and award uh, phase. So, we're in the project formally transits from design into construction. So, it begins with an invitation for a specific bidder. So, usually, um, owner or company or uh, the government will invite a uh, bid or sa mga contractors no so yung mga contractors gasabit sila ng mga bids nila para makuha yung project so usually uh, ang nangyayari yung kung sino yung pinaka lowest bidder sa usually yung nakakuha ng project so in fast track project this space overlaps with the design phase so if the project is based uh, is project space each work package will be bid out individually so kung by page siya, by page din yung pagbid. Okay, it's very important stage to select highly qualified contractors. So it is not wise to select the underbid contractors. So usually meron naman yung ano, uh, ceiling or kumbaga uh, meron kang cost na dapat ma-meet uh, nung isang contractor or bidder. Pero hindi ibig sabihin na siya yung pinakamababa, maganda na yung services na uh, pwede niyang ipakita. Usually gan hindi ganun kasi just sa mga disadvantages ng mga lowest bidder lagi lagi iniiwan yung ano yung project kasi minsan nauubusan sila ng budget kaya sa kalagitnaan ng construction stage magrereklamo yung contractor na sir kulang yung ano yung project cost meron kaming hindi na dagdag mas marami na silang hihingi na additional which is dapat during bidding phase pa lang asinama na nila Usually, marami akong na-encounter na gano'n ng mga problema. Yung mga contractor na, ano, pagdating ng bidding, uh, galante. Kala mo kung sinong mga astig. Sige, sir, engineer, kami bahala dyan. Tatapusin namin yan ng gantong petsa. Di, ikaw naman, syempre, si Baguhan. Sige, approve mo agad. O, oh, sige, sa'yo ko bibigay itong uh, unit na to. Sa ganitong presyo. Pero during construction na, yan na, dami ng reklamo ni contractor. Sir, namali kami ng estimate sa ganitong, ano, uh, works. Pwede ba makahingi ng dagdag, additional? Yun, doon na nagsimula yung problema ngayon ng isang project. Since ikaw, tiwala ka na kung ano yung bilid nila, uh, yun lang yung gagastusin. Siyempre, mag-add ka na naman ng mga additional cost. Kaya doon nasisira yung ano, uh, construction management. Yung mga bagay-bagay na hindi na isama during the bidding phase. Which is dapat included na siya nung nag-bid yung uh, contractor. Ayun yung ano, dapat yung tatandaan. Na kung ano lang yung mga sinama na scope of works during bidding, uh, dapat yun lang ang dapat nyo bayaran. Huwag kayong pumayag na magpa-additional, na manghingi ng additional uh, payment si contractor. Or unless, syempre, may mga tinatawag na exemption, like during calamities or Lagda may mga interventions from uh, mga red groups or mga communities, communist groups kung sinunog yung mga equipment nila, mga ganun. 
So, pwedeng pag-usapan yun on how you will resolve uh, the issues. Okay. Okay, procurement phase. So, the project team purchased the required equipment, materials, and hire labor to complete the project. So, during this phase, sabihin, uh, dyan na yung binibili na yung mga kailangan mga equipment, materials, at syempre yung bilang ng mga tao na i-hire or manpower. Okay. So, dapat during this phase, uh, balance. Yung materialis mo, yung manpower mo, syempre yung ano mo, uh, money or papasweldo mo sa tao. Dapat laging balance. Hindi pwedeng mas marami mo yung materialis, tapos kakaunti lang yung mga manpower mo na magkatrabaho. So, hindi siya balance. So, ang mangyayari, baka tumigas lang iba mong mga semento. Hindi agad magamit ng mga tao kasi ilan lang yung tao mo, dalawa, tatlo, ganun. So, tapos kung gano'ng karami yung tao mo, gano'n din karami yung uh, materialis mo na nasa site. Hindi pwedeng sa isang bulto, bilhin mo na lahat ng mga materialis, ando na lahat sa site. Hindi pwedeng gano'n. Dapat by paste din yun kasi, lalo pag semento, mga bakal, di ba pag uh, semento tumitigas, bakal naman kinakalawang. So, pangit. Papangit yung quality pagka gano'n. Yan, mahirap din naman kung napakarami mong uh, karpintero, tapos konti lang naman yung uh, kailangan gawin na carpentry works. So, try to unrend. Balance din. Okay? Kasi pag marami kang manpower, lalaki rin yung overhead expenses mo. Okay, and during for construction phase, so this stage, this stage takes the project from procurement to the final completion. So, it includes setting up of temporary facilities, securing the site, uh, developing the materials and handling plan, establishing a city, programs, and more. So, temporary facilities or tempasil, yan yung mga uh, bodega, uh, mga barracks ng mga tao, yan kung saan kukunin yung tubig, kuryente, gagamitin sa site. Then, securing the site, alagyan nyo ng uh, coral along the perimeter of the uh, of the project. Yan. Then, yung developing materials, yan sinasabi ko kanina on how you will handle the materials on site. So, wag order ng order, bagsak ng bagsak. Okay, mahirap mag-stock ng napakaraming stocks. Then, of course, establishing safety program. So, laging consider pa rin ang safety ng mga uh, trabahante or workers. So, safety first, ika nga. Kasi kada magkaroon ng aksidente or uh, worse, magkaroon ng patay sa site, that is not good. So, additional expenses na naman yan lalo na sa owner or sa management uh, type. So, dapat iwasan din yung ano. Ay, yung mga ganun. Dapat laging work uh, in safe, safety manner. Okay? And for the close-out phase, so this transition from design and construction to the actual use of the constructed facility. So, yun ang turn over nyo sa may-ari yung natapos ninyo na project. So, the project team create a project punch list. So, kakundak kayo ng punch list of any task that did not get accomplished and may conduct a post-project review, documents, lesson learned, archive documents, or prepare a project uh, completion report. Yan na yung marami ng uh, complaint or reklamo si owner sa contractor. Yan yung pinakamadugo rin na part. Yung turnover or close out pace. Eh, dapat lagi nyo check yung mga nasa specifications, plano, kung nagawa ba ng contractor o na-deliver ba niya, yun, dyan niya lalagay. Ngayon rin, meron siyang hindi natapos na pintuan, hindi niya naikabit. Kaya pangat niya magkakabit ng pinto, hindi tuwid or wala sa hulog. Lalagay niyo sa punch list para gawin ulit nung uh, contractor. So, usually naman sa ano sa contract, sa contract meron mga tinatawag na retention. Uh, yun yung mga or natitirang uh, pera na dapat singilin ni contractor. So, retention, nire-retain muna yon sa owner. Na ibibigay lang kung matapos na ng contractor yung punch list or yung mga complaint mo or yung mga hindi magandang uh, nagawa ng contractor. So, example, may mga crack yung mga walls o kaya yung pintura is nagbabubbles, ganun. So, ipaparidun nyo yun sa, ano, sa mga contractor. Dapat gawin nila. Or kung hindi, hindi nila makukuha yung uh, retention. Usually, nasa ano rin yun, uh, 15 to 10%. So, malaki-laki rin yun. 
So, yun yung panghawak ng uh, owner uh, sa mga contractor para hindi maka-eska po agad-agad yung mga contractor. Okay. Then, what are the types of construction? We have the residential housing construction. Includes single family houses, multi-family dwellings, and high-rise apartments or condominiums. So, I'm sure familiar mo sa residential housing construction. Kung sa kayo nakatira, yun na yun. Then, we have institutional and commercial buildings construction. So, it encompasses a great variety of project types and sizes. So, such as schools, universities, uh, medical clinics, hospitals, recreation facilities, and sports stadiums, retail, chain stores, and large shopping centers, mga malls, warehouses, and light manufacturing plants, skyscrapers for offices and hotels. So, yun ang under ng institutional and commercial building construction. And for the specialized industrial construction, so it involves large-scale projects with high degree of technological complexity such as oil refineries, steel mills, chemical processing plants, and coal-fired or nuclear power plants. Okay. And the last type of construction is the infrastructure and heavy uh, construction. So, it includes projects such as highways, mass transit systems, mga tren, tunnels, bridges, pipelines, drainage systems, and sewage treatment plants. So, these are most publicly owned. So, kasama nga yung mga airport. Ganun. Airport, land port, mga pier, mga ports. Okay? So, basta under siya ng public, heavy construction na siya. Okay? Then, another part of construction project management about labor and material Utilization. So, material utilization is definitely one of our focal areas when we start planning the development uh, projects. So, bringing ideas which can facilitate the reduction of energy, water, and materials use as well as the enhancement of overall efficiency of buildings and facilities. So, dyan na pumapasok yung environment-friendly na tinatawag nila na mga structure. No? So, pag-minimize paggamit ng mga energy, like water and electricity. Okay, for labor productivity is a ratio of output to input that can be used to measure economic growth, technical progress, and worker uh, efficiency. So, one of some of the labor characteristics of a uh, labor or manpower is first we have to see it's the quality of its work. So, when we say quality of work, it's the caliber of work produced or accomplished. O kung gano ba katibay or kaganda uh, yung output na nagawa niya. Okay? For example, yung pintura ba, hindi pa madaling magbakbak? O hindi ba siya basta-basta magpipaid? Ayan, some of the quality work na dapat din yung chinicheck on site. Or during buhos, dapat walang mga honeycomb. Ganyan. Maganda yung ano niya, concrete na na-produce. Okay? And then we have the quantity of work. So, that is uh, the volume of acceptable work. So, expensive quantity. So, example, kung gano'n niya, kung gano'n karami square meters or area yung napintura niya sa isang araw. Identify mo kung uh, sa ilang square meter, kung ilang oras niya pininturahan yun. Doon may identify yung kanyang quantity of work. Kung gano'n niya tapusin yung pagbubuhos ng mga columns and beams or gano'n siya kabilis magkasintato ng mga hollow blocks. Ganun. So, the main area pa yung quantity of kanyang work. Kung gano'n siya kabilis magtrabaho. Okay. Then, we have the job knowledge. So, knowledge of requirements, methods, techniques, and skills in doing the job. Okay, baka mamaya hinahin niya siya as carpentero pero ang tinatrabaho niya is pang mason or pang steel man. So, every specialization, uh, every position, May kanya-kanya yung specialization and skills. Okay. Huwag kayong mag-hire ng steelman tapos ang natrabuhin niya pang karpintero. Delikado yun. Imbis na pabilis, mas lalo mong malala, mapabagal ang trabaho. Pagka ganun. At unsafe pa siya. Mare pang makadisgrasya. Okay. Of course, another characteristic of a labor is the judgment when the decisions and actions. So, example, nagkaroon ng problema sa site. Kung ano ang gagawin niya. How will he or she will handle uh, the situations, okay, that will define his judgment. And another is the initiative, is the ability to take effective action without being told. 
So kunwari meron pang hindi nagagawa. Hindi siya nagiintay ng utos. Ginagawa na niya agad ng pagkukusa. Yun yung initiative. And of course, the communicative ability. So that is effectiveness in oral and written communication sa mga co-workers niya, sa boarding and supervisors niya, sa owner, or sa mga ibang contractors. Yan. Dapat maayos ba siya makipag-usap? Or laging pabalang? Or laging matapang? May mga ganun na tao eh. Yung parang makausap mo parang laging galit. Or akala mo ang yabang-yabang pero hindi pala ganun. Kung baga, normal na niya pala yung ganun. Minsan kasi sa tono ng panalita, minsan sa tono pala ng kanyang panalita, mapapaaway ka ni. Lalo kung ikaw ay kanyang supervisor, the way na sagot-sagutin ka niya. May mga ganun eh. Lalo sa construction site, may mga trabahante or workers na nakakabwisit talaga. Na pag may tinanong mo, ang sagot, iba, pabalang na, sarap sa pukin. <laughs> Eh, ano, uh, na maingka, marami din kayo maingkanto ng mga ganyan sa, ano, sa construction if you choose sa operations na site and of course a worker should have the ability to work under pressure no? ability to meet tight deadlines and adapt to changes o kaya let's say may pinagawa ka tapos sinabi mo dapat bago matapos ang tanghali tapos mo na yan mga ganun yung tapang ko yun sige sir akong bahala katapusin ko yan bago mag alas 12 you know? Yun yung mga ability ng ano, worker under pressure. Kung mag-pressure mo siya na dapat kentong oras tapusin mo yung trabaho. O kung hindi, isipahin kita. <laughs> ah, ganun. And then of course, depende pa rin siya sa kanyang uh, quality. quality. And of course, last uh, characteristic of labor is the safety consciousness. It's the knowledge of good safety practices. So kung magtrabaho siya, lagi ba siyang nasa safe na lugar? Uh, one example of safety consciousness is kunyari, ah, uh, May ipapako siya, mga martilyo siya, no? Tapos wala siyang martilyo. Ang ginamit niya is bato na pamukpok. That is unsafe. Practices. Or dapat pag nasa site ba siya, nakasot ba lagi yung mga PPE niya? Naka hard hat ba siya? Naka safety boots or shoes ba siya? Naka gloves ba siya during uh, work? So, yun yung mga dapat din nilang i-consider. So, dapat din nila binabali wala yung mga safety practices. Then let's go to materials management. So it refers to overseeing the location and movement of physical items or products. So materials represents major expense in construction. So minimizing procurement or purchase costs presents important opportunities for redu reducing costs. Tama. The availability of materials may greatly influence the schedule in projects with a fast track or very tight uh, time schedule. So, sufficient time for obtaining the necessary material must be allowed. So, what are the main elements of materials management? We have number one is spare parts. So, it's very integral to the continuing operation of the production lines and related equipment. So, usually, lalo na may mga equipment, construction equipment, dapat may mga ano siya, uh, spare parts sa mga bodega. Para in case of breakdown, agad-agad maayos yung, ano, yung equipment para hindi maging cost of delay. During uh, construction. Marami rin ako na-encounter niyan during sa ano, construction. Yung walang mga spare parts. It would take mga ilang days bago pa makabili ng spare parts. Kasi usually, ano pa, dati, sa Manila pa mga galing yung spare parts. Tapos papadala pa sa Dabao. So, sobrang delay na. Imbis na meron kong target na hinahabol, uh, maging cost na yun ang delay. So, dapat pa lang, pag-start pa lang ng construction, Meron ka na mga spare parts sa iyong mga equipment. Okay. Second element of materials management is quality control. So, you should ensure the products are of high and consistent value. It's a major part of materials management. So, all parts and materials must be tested to ensure specific level of quality. So, yan yung mga number one na dapat chinecheck natin as engineer or supervisor sa construction site. Yung quality ng mga materials na dumarating sa site. So usually pag hindi uh, ko alam kung sa local local supplier kasi sa ano kami sa Manila pag mga direct supplier nanghihingi kami ng certification or mga test na kinondak uh, ni supplier halimbawa sa mga bakal meron mga test kasi yun na ibibigay si supplier na pagpatunay na yung kanilang mga product is pasado sa standards 
hindi ko alam sa mga local hardware kung meron ba silang mga ganun din na certification na binibigay. Pag dere ka kahit sa supplier, meron silang ganun. Pero pag sa mga hardware yata parang wala. Hindi ko sure. And then another element is inventory management. So it refers to method by which business handle tangible resources and materials in order to make sure resources are readily available for use. So tracking of all materials in a company's inventory. Okay. So ayan yung kagawa ka ng inventory kung ilan na yung uh, materials na nagamit or nailabas. Then ilan pa yung mga available na materials. So usually uh, ginagawa yan ng bodegero. Or tipong may mga record book or merong merong mga ano merong mga workers dapat meron silang pilapan na withdrawal slip ni sila sila pwedeng kumuha ng materials kung walang withdrawal slip na pipirma ng supervisor or ng isang engineer part yun ng ano uh, inventory management so dapat yung naka-record lagi ko yung para pagdating ng checking may kita doon kung saan ginamit kung sino ang kumuha kung kailan kinuha or kung kailan ginamit okay Usually kasi pag walang inventory, ang nangyari, pag nagkaroon ng mga kawalaan or nakawan, mahirap hanapin. Then syempre, ang CC niyan lagi is nasa uh, site engineer. Alam mo, dalas makawin mga uh, wires, electrical wires, electrical fixtures, mga plumbing fixtures. Yun yung mga madalas, madalas uh, manakaw sa site. Kasi medyo mga mahal. Saka madali lang ipuslip. So when you are sa construction site, Uh, sa operation so make sure aware kayo or pamilya kayo sa ano pag inventory ng mga materials sa site okay then another part of cost estimation uh, construction project management of course is cost estimation so dapat uh, magaling kayong mag cost estimate so isa sa mga pwede nyo uh, apply yan in case after nyo makapasa sa board exam is to become an estimator so cost estimate establish the baseline of the project so cost at different stages of development of the project so a cost estimate at the given stage of project development represents a prediction provided by the cost engineer or estimator on basis of available data so kung plano nyo mag apply as cost engineer or estimator I would advise sa mga malaking kumpanya kayo pumasok sa malalaki yung ano sahod dyan pag cost estimator or tinatawag na quantity uh, surveyor yan. and what are the importance of estimating number one it enables to weigh anticipated benefits against anticipated cost to see whether the project makes sense and number two allows to see whether necessary funds are available to support the project and three serve as guideline to help ensure sufficient funds to complete the project So, syempre, ang isang project lagi nakabase sa cost. Okay? It always starts with an estimate. So, hindi naman pwedeng i-push through ang isang project. Pero ang base sa estimate niya is ano ka, over budget. Kunyari, 100,000 lang yung uh, budget mo sa isang uh, project. Tapos, during estimate, naging 150. So, that's over budget. So, what you need to do? Huwag mo ipatuloy yung project. Kasi, Maluluwi ka, hindi mo natapos yung project. Kawawa ka. So, ganun din kung mag, nagpatayo kayo ng bahay. So, example, ang budget nyo na sa bahay nyo, 500,000. Tapos, during your estimate, umabot ng billion. So, wag muna. Kasi pag nagkaroon ng delay because of the budget, ah, masisira yung, ano, yung structure. Okay, what are the types of construction cost estimates? Eh, we have number one, design estimates. So, it's encountered run parallel with the planning and design as follows. So, kasabay siya ng planning and design stage or pace. So, A, screening estimates or order of magnitude estimate. It's made uh, before the facility is designed and rely on the cost of similar facilities in the past. So, screening estimates, kung may kaparehas na facility, So, yun lang maging base mo, basis mo. Next, the preliminary estimates or conceptual estimates. So, base naman siya sa conceptual design of the facility at the state when the basic technologies for design are uh, known. Uh, kunwari, kunwari ngayong month, ang presyo ng uh, isang sementong 
Cement, isang bag ng semento ay 200 per socks. And after yung mga next year, naging 250 na. So, ang naging uh, preliminary estimate mo, yung uh, kasalukuyang presyo ng mga materyales. Okay. And for detailed estimate, is made when the scope of work is clearly defined and detailed design is in progress. Okay. Detailed estimate, kumbaga yung uh, actual na na presyo. Next, another types of estimate, we have the bid estimates. It's for the contractor. It's an estimate submitted to the owner for reading or negotiations consists of direct construction costs, including uh, field supervision plus a markup to cover general overhead and profits. So, kasama dyan mga subcontractor quotations, quantity take-offs, construction uh, procedure. Then, we have the control estimates. So, for monitoring project during construction, Uh, control estimate, budget estimate for financing, budgeted cost after contracting but prior to construction, and the estimated cost to completion during the progress of construction. So, ito yung example ng ano, isang uh, cost estimate or detailed estimates. So, andyan yung mga scope of works, concrete work example description kung ano mga materialist na gagawin, yung mga quantity, units, unit cost, and the, of course the amount. So, ito nakalagay yan. Kita nyo yung mga scope of works. Then, ito. Yung mga materiales. Quantity. Ang units siya. Usually, pag mga semento, uh, mga bags yan. Mga sand, gravel, bare cubic meters. So, ganyan. So, matutunan nyo yan sa ano. During sa uh, estimate construction estimate na subject ninyo. Tuturo yan sa inyo kung paano mag-estimate. Okay? Yan. So, ang dami, no? Ito yung nakakaduguri ng utak, eh. Nakapagod mag-estimate. <laughs> Lalo kung ano siya, uh, building yung gagawin, mga high-rise. Okay lang kung simpleng bahay lang siya. Dali lang. Okay? So, that's it for the part 2 lesson of about construction project management. So, I'll just give you an idea. So, hindi pa ito yung detail talaga na, ano, na mga topics. Okay. And for your next activity, we have to-do list. Ang gagawin nyo is about punch listing. So, tulong ka paano mag-punch list. So, all you need to do, so you should look one ongoing house construction. So, Repelably, mga single story para madali lang siya i-conduct ng inspection. So, currently under finishing stage na. So, like painting na lang, kakabit na lang ng mga lighting, plumbing pictures, yun na lang. So, dapat halos patapos na yung construction ng uh, building or facility. So, ano lang nga, uh, kahit maliit lang na bahay na concrete type of structures. So, na malapit lang sa inyong community. Huwag na kayong lumayo sa ibang lugar. Kasi delikado. Okay? Kung meron kayo sa mga kapitbahay nyo, the better. Then, you need to ask, of course, permission to the owner of the house kung pwede nyo ba kayong makapag-conduct ng uh, inspection or quality inspection sa ginagawang uh, bahay niya. Then, make sure the unit or site is safe. So, no workers working during your inspection. So, mas maganda kung during uh, lunch or hapon or kung break ng mga workers para hindi sila maabala at hindi din kayo maabala. Then, have a guardian or adult to accompany your group during uh, inspection. So, wag na wag kayong pupunta sa site kung wala kayong guardian or adult na kasama. Okay, and make sure the site is safe. So, iwasan nyo na magkaroon kayo ng aksidente or mapahamak kayo. So, kung pupunta kayo ng site, dapat nakasapatos kayo or nakasiti shoes. Nanggat maaari, kung meron kayong hard hat or uh, sombrero na matibay, so isuot nyo. Okay, and then for the prepa preparation, so prepare the following material. So, you should have steel tape. L square folder, level bar, penny or wonder lumber, pen or marker. So, yan. And for the inspection, so, download the attached punch list form at Canvas LMS under assignment 
So, ito yung ginawa kong punch list form. So, i-download nyo na lang sa NMS. So, nakalagay dyan yung project. So, usually nakalagay kong single story uh, residential house ng location kung saan yung address. Inspection date kung kailan kayo nag-inspect. Inspection time kung ano oras kayo nag-inspect. Okay, control number, wag nyo nang lagyan to. Contract number, wag nyo nang lagyan. Then, constructed by kung sino yung contractor, pangalan ng contractor o contractor. Pero kung ano lang siya, uh, tawag dito, uh, foreman lang siya, ilagay nyo kung ano yung pangalan niya. Okay, then the model structure, kung anong uh, type ba siya. Residential concrete type structure. Yan. Then client represent notified, oh, huwag nyo nang lagyan to. Then item number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and, and so on. Then, uh, item, location, lagay nyo dyan. Example. Kunyari, uh, uh, cheap or crack tiles at bathroom. Uh, bathroom floors. Ganun. O kaya, uh, window is not functioning at living room. Ganun. Okay. Then, date required. So, example, lagay nyo ng date required. So, dapat, one week after one week after inspection again nyo dyan then kung nagawa ba nila babalikan nyo siya check nyo ulit kung nagawa or na-comply then date completed then certified of course by the QA or QC engineer so huwag nyo na lagi ko nito kasi hindi naman nyo na babalikan eh magkakontak lang kayo ng ano initial punch list so isulat nyo lang dito kung ano yung mga napansin nyo uh, sa sa structure nangyari Ano pa ba? May mga cracks o kaya yung mga painting is nakaroon ng mga bubbles. O kaya yung mga pinto, tabingi, lagay niya dyan. Sa pinto sa bedroom. Ganun. Okay, then, of course, lagay niya expected by contractor representative. So, lagay niyo dito yung mga pangalan na lang ng mga group mates niyo o group members. Lagay niyo yung name, then you should uh, sign signature. Okay. So, kung kulangan tong ano to, space na to, so, gawa kayo, let kayo ng another page. Okay. Then, ilagay nyo yung ano. Attach nyo yung mga pictures. So, example, ganito. Clearing needs to be cleared. Mga uh, materiales and mga grasses. Then, vinyl floor is unclean or needs cleaning. Ganun. Like no magnetic uh, latches and cleaning so walang mga clothes so lagay nyo dun marumi or untidy uh, cabinet lagay nyo dun example or example lagay nyo dito kunwari ito hindi pantay yung mga tiles may mga scratches and madumi yung mga uh, bathroom fixtures o yung bintana may crack lagay nyo dun crack window glasses lagyan nyo ok so ganyan yung example then scan all areas in systematic manner from ceiling to floor so magsumula kayo lagi sa ceiling then from entrance to exit so from one part of the house to another so you should be specific with the punch list items so you should go into details so use engineering terminologies if necessary so take note of each punch list item so if necessary take photos katulad yung panakita ko kanina May photos, so indicate nyo kung ano yung uh, punch list item. Then, record all your observation in the punch list form. Then, I have some here, some guidelines. So, punch list checklist guidelines. So, ceiling. So, dapat, ito yung mga dapat nyo i-check. So, materials are free from any damages ba? So, smooth surfaces ba? And true to elevation. Smooth metro elevation. Uh, hindi wavy yung kisame. Location of holes conforms to plan. So, tama ba as per plan? Ceiling walls are properly fastened or dapat hindi kita or nakahide yung mga fastening nails. So, line intersection are consistent. So, dapat maganda ba yung pagkaka-terminate ano, ng mga ceiling boards. So, check nyo na yung mga sa pants list checklist. Naka-include din naman to sa ano sa module. So, help sa doors. Dapat to alignment and plumbness. So, nasa hulog ba? well fitted, accessories are installed so mga door na nakalagay na ba 
or wala bang mga dumi, windows, ganun. Okay, for walls, flooring, toilet and bath, kitchen. And ito lang yung mga others, example checklist. Marami pa. Hindi ko na lang in-include dyan para hindi kayo masyadong malito. So, dito lang kayo mag-ano sa basics or some uh, parameters. Okay, and then for the part D, so after ng punch this form, gawa kayo ng another form, describe your learning and problems encountered during the activities. Then, of course, attach the photos of your punch list items. Okay, and what else? Surrender na ba? Drat na lagi para dili na ka mahago. Of course, congratulations again. And you may proceed to the next lesson. So, hapit na. Finals is waving. Okay, so that's for all. See you again uh, next uh, video lectures. Okay, bye and good luck. And again, sorry kay Karil J. Nagamit takas akong ano, example. Don't worry na kay plus points. Okay, see you.